Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Live Trading Webinar. This is the Bookmap Advanced Education uh, that we have daily. And uh, today we have, uh, well, every Wednesday we have uh, uh, Jay Trader, Joseph. Uh, he's a stocks trader, uh, and uh, he'll be going through um, uh, live trading uh, examples, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, on until about uh, 11 or so Eastern time here. Um, and uh, let's... Uh, let me jump in here. Let me just get set up here. Uh, he'll be in in a few minutes. Uh, he's always uh, uh, comes in late. He's finishing up with his trading room, uh, and um, uh, and then he then he's in in about uh, 10, 15, 10, 20, something something like that. All right. So uh, we'll keep an, a lookout for him as he jumps in here. Uh, good morning, David. Good morning, H E. Uh, Okay, yeah, uh, HE, I'm, I'm, my apologies. I'm getting up and running uh, with uh, some of the things on on your account there. Um, uh, yeah, I can I can speak with you uh, later. Okay, so uh, yeah, s sorry about this. Uh, I was dealing with this morning, and then uh, I just got hammered with a bunch of um, uh, uh, meetings, etc. Anyway, let's move on. Um, and uh, you guys know who J Trader is. Uh, so uh, we'll continue here. His contact information I will put into the chat. Uh, so if you like the way that uh, he trades, this is something that resonates with you, uh, you can reach out to him and uh, he offers education and mentoring services. So uh, in fact, I'll put it into the chat right now for you, okay, in uh, the GoToWebinar chat. There you go. So you can click on those links uh, or copy the um, uh, his email, et cetera. Uh, all right, the disclosures, I uh, need to go through this. Uh, and uh, so you guys understand what you're getting involved with here uh, and why we're going over live trading, et cetera. Uh, this is important. Uh, it's uh, it's not to be shadowed here. Uh, you should know about the risk disclosures. All right, so uh, all bookmap limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendation. Uh, Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Good morning, Doug um, and Foz. Uh, let's see. There's the, the beta version for the on-chart uh, indicator um, stops. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, it's. Sh I'm not sure if it's available in the current download. It's. It is for the beta version, but. Um, you know, I reach out to support on that one, Foz. I think that would be the, the easiest uh, route. Uh, guys, so just about the, the risk disclosures that uh, you understand that he is trading in, in demo mode. Uh, and um, the reason being is uh, uh, so not to, not to, to shadow. I mean, uh, I, I mean, he's an excellent trader. There's no question about that. Uh, and you can learn about his process, learn about his trade management, uh, learn about um, uh, you know his kind of uh, ment mentality uh, towards the uh, his setups and his outlooks and uh, uh, his risk management. Uh, this is the key, okay? Uh, and uh, that's what the, we bring in the live trading for, okay? Not to sit back and oh he's buying I'm going to buy. That's just it. It's just idiotic, uh, and it it doesn't help anybody. Uh, let's suppose you lose, uh, then you're going to go oh they don't know what they're doing. He he completely knows what he's doing. Uh, he he knows uh, very well very well how to trade. He's very successful. All right. So uh, it, anyway, uh, that's uh, one of the reasons as well. Um, and uh, let's uh, let's jump in and we're going to go through the um, uh, current market right now with the S and P E mini while we're waiting for uh, Joseph to uh, jump into the room here. All right. So uh, yeah, just uh, taking a look here. Um, well, another strong move off of 60. Now we've sold off a few days here, uh, and uh, we can see that uh, a strong move here at the 9:30 cash open, back up above this swing right here, okay, into high liquidity up here, and it's still trying to get a little bit higher here. 
uh, looking for 40, 70, and 71. This was a key area we were looking at yesterday and we traded through it. Um, bigger picture analysis is needed here because we covered this on Monday and this is really important. Uh, so let's take a look at this. This is the daily and you can see the strong moves here on the breakout, all time highs, et cetera. Uh, and then uh, you can see uh, uh, a bit of a slowdown here uh, yesterday uh, and um, a narrow, narrower range. Uh, and you can see today uh, is kind of struggling right now, okay? Now, what we covered on Monday, let's look at the hour chart here, okay? Uh, we were looking at all sorts of iceberg orders, um, and that was on Monday, which uh, that would be the um, uh, the fifth. So let's see, where exactly is that? And I, I know that we marked this up, and I just wanna go over it again and keep a lookout for it, okay? Because if we start to see a sell-off here, uh, we're looking for getting below uh, our level here, which was 4050. Okay. Yeah, here we are in the fifth in, in this area, and we're going sideways here. Now it's still bullish. Structure on this hour chart is still bullish. Okay. Uh, no, no doubt about it. Right. But we're going to start to see if we get a test down in some of these areas and start to break it. If we start to break 50, this is where we were looking for on Monday, that higher time frame order flow analysis, a lot due to the massive selling of icebergs. Okay, so you know, uh, just uh, something to keep in mind uh, on the higher time frame here, uh, and um, uh, let me uh, uh, kind of mark that up again. So we're looking for the break maybe around here, okay, 40, 50, uh, and then the move down into somewhere, you know, somewhere around this area here, okay, it would be something like this, uh, 35 to, uh, or I think we said 38 to 21. Uh, type of area here, all right? So keep an eye out on the higher time frame. Uh, if we start to get down in some of these areas and we start to see momentum to the downside, right? Uh, and sellers, uh, big sell dots uh, starting to come in, them adding on the offer quite a bit, them pulling on the bid, uh, we'd, we'd, we'd see a nice kind of a, a juicy move into this lower area here, all right? Just something to consider, a scenario. At the moment, we're still bullish. Okay, until we see something different. Anyway, um, all right, enough said. Uh, let's let's look at the lower time frame now, uh, and then uh, still waiting for uh, for Joseph to uh, to jump in here. All right, on the lower time frame. Uh, yep, we were just uh, looking at the, uh, the the nice move to the upside here. Uh, higher liquidity up here at that 70 level. This is something we covered yesterday, the 70 level, uh, and uh, you can see it's kind of struggling here at the moment. Uh, so um, can't can't even quite get up to it uh, yet, and we see some sellers already, um, you know, kind of quick move down here. Now, where did this move go to? Okay, this is why we're still bullish here. It went down to point of control, and it's still holding. Right, point of control. For those of you new to that concept in auction market theory, it just means the most traded level. Okay, now it's been kind of you can see how kind of sensitive it is right now. Okay. There's a lot of trading up in this level here, so it's been changing quite a bit here, right? But more or less, the average is somewhere around here, right? And so far, it's supporting it. So the scenario for the for the uh, sell side would be this. Okay, let's just uh, open this up a little bit. Okay, on the sell side, what we'd be looking for uh, in this scenario would be uh, down at this level here. Okay start to see these big red dots, okay? Pulling that market down, right? Not only big red dots, but price movement together with it, okay? Uh, and then this can open up into the move into our 50 level, uh, which is, uh, well, I mean, we'd be looking for the move way, way down into, you know, the the, the um, uh, cash open or even, even below it here. We'd be looking for this liquidity down here around 60, all right? So just open to that scenario and looking for it, okay? Uh, the first move on this one, if we're looking at uh, smaller time frames, we'd be looking for it to move down to 65, okay? As simple as that. All right, anyway, uh, that's the uh, kind of higher time frame and uh, lower time frame uh, scenarios to take a look at. Um, on the um, uh, higher time frame as well, like like we said, we're, you know, we're still uh, breaking out to new highs here. 
uh, struggling a little bit last couple of days. Uh, and then uh, let's see if uh, we get enough buyers up here right now. Okay, they're pulling here at 69 and a half. Okay, let's see if we get our volume in here. Okay, green dots uh, to trade up into 70 and 71. Okay, would love to see that. Would love to see a stop run as well uh, on the move up here. And where is Joseph? And he in see in here yet? Let's take a quick look. Not yet. There he is. All right. Good morning, Joseph. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Uh, doing better. Thank you, Bruce, for asking. Yeah, yeah, everything. Uh, uh not not quite back up to to uh what it was before but uh feeling much better though yeah 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 feeling better buddy feeling uh, good to hear off. good to hear um okay let me uh, uh just turn it over we are we already uh, kind of we're already prepped for you here so uh take it away okay so let me put show screen okay do you see gme book map and the charts uh yes okay perfect so um this morning traders i'm gonna start with uh, uh, small caps then go futures and big caps uh we had day two on sj so uh yesterday uh huge trap over here halted sj uh trap early short sellers you can see if we put uh, a one minute chart, you can see the difference. I'm gonna do like this. We can see the difference over here, high volume, right? And you can see great volume. So we have big buyers to low volume. And low volume consequence was done wide. This morning we are looking for a fader. So reason to short. Uh, my plan was to short into the 12, uh, 1240, $1230 area, never came, so no uh, trade over here. Uh, then we had BTX, another day two. This uh, worked perfectly. So plan was to look for uh, JLAN rejection. Uh, ideally, uh, 590 up till 610. But you can see over here we have a first day in a rejection, second day in a rejection, uh, sellers, sellers, sellers. Now the volume simply died. Uh, on a day two is pretty uh, uh, common. This uh, is better. Uh, ASTC. So we are still in the trade. Um, almost all community traded this. I post even on the uh, Discord uh, book map. So we decided to. This is uh, with uh, my cousin. We decided to short over here at the top, first cover, uh, small over here, more cover, 240s, and then looking for two. Uh, the point over here that we saw a huge amount of sellers, this pattern over here is called blow up of volume gap and extension, came down, JLAN rejection, and simply I explained in, um, in a book map, the score room, how this setup over here, uh, was an A plus setup to reshort at 266, risking 272. Because if you see traders uh, this level, okay, uh, we're gonna do like this. If you see this level is full of book map resistance, so it's full of sellers, and this is the exact call that we uh, we had. Some traders took it, and then looking for more on white. Some support now at the 240, but we expect more unwind. Ideally, if we have a push to 250, 260 uh, into this area, I'm gonna look to add a little bit more for uh, an unwind. Uh, we're actually um, short on GME. 
uh, GME is one of those stocks that I not really like it, but I have to say we have a lot of range. So uh, you can see uh, two patterns over here. First, we have this 180, 195 consolidation. Yesterday was an inside day, okay? So the range of this day was inside this range over here. And now we're still inside that range and we're forming a pendant, okay? Uh, pendant or seems a bear flag. So we shorted this morning into the 183. Why? Why we got short over there? Again, we had a uh, seller's on book map. We had a pop into the five minute J lines and fail. So we're looking now for the break of this pendant and unwind. This will be probably the stock that we're gonna follow right now, okay? Also, we have Roku and Yes. Yes gave us uh, two perfect entry points at this dip. I'm going to show over here, yes. I mean, this was simply marvelous. I'm going to do like this because I think it's very important to make you understand the patterns, okay? Market, if you want to have an edge, you have to learn the chart patterns. Over here, we have the first support. You can see this level. And then we have a second support. This worked like crazy over here with bookmap support down here okay so this is another one that i will be uh keeping on watch today so for now gme is the main watch okay uh, let's put on bookmap gme you can see that we have some support 180 right now we have Three to one uh, buyers, okay, 29 and 7,000. And this is the trade over here into the 182. I want to see if we can have unwind, otherwise we're going to risk 182 and 50, almost break even, okay? I'm liking the fact that we have seller over here, seller over here, seller over here. So uh, this is a pretty good confirmation when I'm looking for short or vice versa if I'm looking for uh, a long. Uh, Joseph, uh, just a, a quick question on the kind of higher time frame stuff that one of the stocks you went off over, uh, I think SJ uh, previously about uh, uh, big uh, candlestick move up above and then rejection and then um, sellers come in on the other side. Uh, mm -hmm. it, you you name that um, or you have a name for it like... Um, well, which is often a gap and extension, yeah. Extension and fail, is that what you called it? Yeah, gap and extension, because often you will have like a, a gap in the small caps or even in the big caps, you'll have really a gap. Then you have that pop and then a fail. Jimmy is a day two for me, which is the same setup as we have on SJ today or BTX. When I see this, beautiful seller, beautiful. Yes, working. Jimmy, perfect. Jimmy. I, I'm just curious what might be the difference between that and your stuff. Um... It's uh, it's uh, basically uh, a cell that is not always a stuff, so really can be just even a, a small and um, uh, pop or even a slow rejection. But the fact that uh, the one minute J lines is below the three and the five give me a conviction to take the short and look for that unwind. Yeah, that's that's beautiful, right yeah. there. So we had it on uh, ASTC, which is a gap and extension up here. Uh, we had it on GME, which is day two. Uh, we had it on uh, BTX, uh, which is also a day two. You see over here, one minute J lines, one minute J lines. Okay, perfect. 
read on GME for this morning. This will be our pick today, okay? So keep comfortable, um, stay on your sofa, on your chair, and we're gonna follow this. So my average is 182.10. I'm risking now break even. Sorry, 182 and 20, risking break even. And at this level, we also have the signals, okay? I'm using a five minute chart, but we can use the, the one minute chart. Just when I see uh, all these um, inside bars, all this consolidation, very choppy over here, I like to shift to switch to a five minute chart so I can have that. For now, uh, field breakdown, okay? So careful in case we'll have a reversal. So Jimmy. So we have two big supports at 180, 180 and 50. They were basically soaked. You can see over here soaked 35,000 almost at 179, 180, which is this level over here and bounced, okay? So careful in case we have a, a bounce back up to the JMAs. Uh, just so I understand it conceptually, so the the gap in extension is just because it's um, at the open, correct? Exactly, and and okay. it's also a gap. Okay, and uh, the stuff is something where it's. It, I mean, it, it, the concept is the same. Uh, the concept is the same, but stuff is a fast rejection that can happen any time of the day. Okay, got you. So yes, working over here. I think we will keep also yes on watch. As I said, we want long on the J lines, on the J lines. Book map support, book map support. Okay. We had some days uh, where yes simply like trended so much and we had so many dips on the J line. So this is really like where I'm looking for. Roku still lateral over here. ASTC no setup for now. Isaac was a pump. We have also, <laughs> I'm sorry, we have also UTME uh, halted a couple of times over here. So from 50 to 110. Not really looking to trace something like this. Not my favorite style. Tesla choppy lateral, BA is still lateral here. Baba was also on watch this morning, uh, lateral. Let's see Twitter, pretty breakout. Anyone on the trading floor there making six figures in uh, Tesla today? Uh, <laughs> no, because it was simply super choppy, so not really. Or Boeing. Yeah. Tesla over here, we have this consolidation three days. We need, we need to break or 680 over here or 715, 720. Boeing, the plan today was to look for a short, Bruce, uh, both on this and BABA. But I don't see for now any kind of big sellers. So we can do like this. We can keep it on bookmap as well while we are managing Jimmy, okay? And we can see on BA, if we're gonna have something on the tape. When I say tape trader, it's mainly book map. Um, and see if we can have a breakdown of this consolidation on BA. I'm gonna keep only four stocks, so maybe we can see it better. BA, Jimmy, uh, over here we'll put ES. 
and ASTC over here. Okay, so you're gonna have these five stocks. Okay, let's look. Four stocks. Uh, BWAP over here. We have some support 254, 254 and 20, 254 and 50. So they're actually trying to hold over here. BA, careful. Big support. One eighty been retested on Jimmy. All right, GME is working very nicely there. So we need now, if we are short, okay? So, uh, Jimmy, what would be the next possible entry? What will be also uh, a good target, right? And we can see over here that we are breaking this 180. So I'm looking for book map generally at the whole round dollar number. So 175, 170, 165, 160. If you look the round dollar numbers, traders, you always see in the big caps, buyers, okay, and, and on the supports. Now they put some support at 178, okay? But I'm not really looking to get out at 178 despite this, because look how many sellers we have over here 21,000, 18,000, 16,000. These are really big traders over here dumping if not the the same trader or many other, many traders using their stop losses for short sellers okay i would like to see the 180 resistance stacked so we'd like to see <clears throat> sorry we like to see some um, heavy sellers over here, follow sellers, and then uh, more in line from there. For now, we have not this. In the meanwhile, ASTC dumping strong. We're still holding this from around, uh, let me see, 295. So we short exactly up here. This is the level where we shorted here. Boom risking three bucks okay so we were risking uh six cents or five six cents target is below 220 nice use unwind each time we had pops into the j lines was also the same level of heat maps over here over here more pops Okay, 179. Beautiful, 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 Jimmy. Jimmy, sick over here, traders, sick. So 178, I'm taking a little bit of profit over here. All right, uh, only because I need to pay myself, okay? I need to pay myself. Joseph, I have some questions on the, how you pay yourself and how that kind of maybe, um, you know, 
causes potential issues with your risk reward ratios. Mm -hmm. So um, tell me, tell me, Bruce. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, so let's say, you know, you have, you know, thousand shares on, you take off like, you know, uh, 500 at a certain area, um, but you've risked more on your stop loss to begin with. Uh, <clears throat> you know, how, how do you, how do you kind of like manage it so that you're always kind of net profit um, with that, with that kind of management system? Mm -hmm. Okay. So for example, uh, on uh, GME, I'm looking for at least a uh, five buck um, full size profit. And I was risking only one buck. So I'm going to have at least between four and five bar. On ASTC, my main target was 240, the first main target, and I was risking five bucks. I'm already like uh, 12R in the money, even with scaling out. So before taking a trade, I always calculate my profit, where is my profit target, my risk, and where I have, uh, uh, and how much is my risk reward. If I wanna have at least three R risk reward, okay, so I'm risking one to make at least three, I'm not going to take the trade. So everything that I trade is simply systematic and calculated. Nothing is left, you know, to emotion or ordinary decision. Uh, just, just great to hear. Yeah, it's uh, one of the most, uh, most important key things if you want to start leverage your trading, if you want to have size. We'll never risk, let's say, a short one buck to make one buck. No is not for me so this I mean, trade i want at least 175 right and you you are also very it's very high probability trade that should work out yeah um, for so the most part anyway percent since starting of the year and uh depends from the from the class as a product but same almost last year yeah yeah, it's just that uh, a lot. There can be a lot of confusion, especially when you're trading kind of higher time or lower time frames about that management. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, maybe you you understand the setup, but you mismanage it, and maybe it's break even or you lose a little bit or make a little, but you could have made a lot more. Exactly, exactly. That's the reason why you always have to have a strategy back tested to know that, for example, on something like ASTC, gap and extension. 80% of the time, 80% of the time, I will get the five minute J lines. So I'm basically trading with uh, edge to my side, risking five cents to make an average of 40 cents, which is not bad, between 40 and 50 cents. So over here now we can have maybe a re add at 181 and 30. We will do this on uh, using bookmark over here to show. Simple, simple setups. So Jimmy going down, Jimmy is at that support. I want to see the break on that support. Let's see if we can have it. VWAP, J lines, 181.50 is the level where, let's say I'm going to short for this now, showing you 300 shares, we'll start with 100. Then if it goes, if it goes, we're going to add. So we short at 100, risk 182.40. I'm 
I want to take already profit at one buck and 20, we yeah, one buck, one buck and 10 cents to reduce my risk and then hold the rest. I don't know, Joseph, that entry, could you, could you have gotten a better entry on that one? Always short ask. Even this morning on, uh, not GME, I'm not the first one, the second yes, but on ASTC, always short ask. Because even with your brokers, you will have basically rebates. So those rebates will at least cover partial of your commissions. So right now, basically, is risk free the trade. Um, this is only an ad, okay? Because it's not the the main setup. The main setup was short between this area and this area. The first entry had a little bit of slippage, but this was the the main entry. So right now, what happened? We took already that one buck, and we are risking break even. So if it goes down will be extra money. If we have a break even, fine, okay? So we are looking for JLens, VWAP, level over here of uh, where I saw resistance, and that's it. Right now you're already like one buck and a half uh, in the money. Always double check your one minute, you wanna be Absolutely sure of what you're doing. This is a pretty good level. So this is a J line rejection, and this <laughs> is the level of J lines rejection. Now I see over here what more sellers than buyers. So this tells me we have potential to unwind. We have to break this 180. Okay, always the whole round of number. CSJ, if we have something. <clears throat> I'm watching also a pump right now, really a pump trade which is BNSO in case we have some A plus setup, <clears throat> we're gonna look at it. Buy the price section over here. Uh, let's check one second, BNSO. Buy the price section, seems a micro float, 100K bone, and not even in mind to trade something like this. So we have a resistance the 1044. I believe this will simply drop down, but no liquidity over here, spreading. Don't even think about it. Go back to me. So they're hold, <coughs> I'm sorry, they're holding trade at this 180. You see, we have as many buyers as many sellers.
Let's check also, yes. So still up trending, ASTC unwinding. BA, we had that trend line break. So BA, we missed this. I missed this. So we had this J line rejection trend break. Okay. Okay, getting back to the 181. I don't see any kind of resistance stacked. <clears throat> I'm sorry if I will cough time to time. So I can inside over here anytime to uh, cover it in the money. Okay, they put a little bit more resistance. We can short another at 181. Let's see if we can get filled. <clears throat> and we cannot trade huge size over here because in two seconds can spike. But we have 5,000 against 5,000. That's a very big imbalance. We have three small supports, 180 to 180 and 50. And right now they're doing, uh, for now, until we are below 180 and 50 is a, a bear flag, okay? okay? So there is like a 25, 30 cents spread over here. We need a break of this uh, trend line, okay? We need another break of 180. So I'm risking now in the money 181 small positions all right <coughs> sorry you cannot <clears throat> you cannot oversize right now this there's no that use liquidity that i want to see possible breakdown coming Okay, so let's see over here, 180 and 15, 180 and 20. We're risking break even. <clears throat> break let's cover another half at one dollar and a half of profit one dollar and seventy so 
we're risking very small. We're making three times more each time <coughs> of uh, profit. Okay, so we got feel over here. Uh, what I, I short ass cover bid. What I don't like is this double support over here, 178. Okay, so that's the reason why I wanted to cover. All right. So over here, Bruce, we could name this a recap if you're going to post it even on a, on YouTube page. Uh, two J lines rejection, this one and this one. So one, two, and we have the first one over here, uh, which is number one. The second one over here, number two. So perfect way how to short Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's beautiful. Um, uh, there's and you also had that VWAP uh, in book map there. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, for the other guys, like with auction market theory, like that's basically a move back to the point of control of that uh, kind of uh, previous uh, consolidation period and rejection. And there's a lot of things going on right there. If you see over here, traders, we don't have a, a clear drop. They're still holding some weight. So I first don't see that huge amount of sellers we would need to see on a break of support. Um, and I still see that, mainly that, is not for the buyers. We don't have buyers at, at all as well over here. <coughs> Okay, the fact is, I think we're gonna have another drop over here. So they're very tight, this level, waiting for this drop to 79. No reason to cover now anymore. We can trim something at 78, we have this, or in the money uh, before this 181, okay? So very tight to this support, looking for more break. We can check in the meantime if we have something else, but I think that GME is a perfect example on how to use book map for unwinds over here. Okay. If you have questions, just like please. I mean, I mean, something that was <clears throat> really nice to hear is uh, that your management style um, by looking at the heat map and the supply and them uh, starting to raise it in some of those levels. Mm -hmm. Like uh, 178, 179, uh, and then they added what you said at, at 178, kind of double uh, double area there, front running. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> so right now, Bruce, even if you see some green over here, I really don't see any buyers. So. That tells me, okay, holding the position, stay in, respect your trailing. Right now, risk free. You want to take out half now of what we have, so one fourth at 178. So before the support, okay. If we break, we're going to look for 175. So the more we hold the trade, the more the trade works in our favor, uh, the more possible R we're going to have. But it's very hard, you know, if we wanted to trade like 300, we never got to 300, maximum half position, uh, 150 shares. It's very hard to load the boat on something like this because in two seconds this can spike 
can have a big loss because it's spreading and there's not that huge amount of liquidity. <clears throat> So Joseph, maybe um, can you mention like why you're trading like uh, I, you 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 just mentioned about the lack of liquidity, mm -hmm. um, and then how do you determine your sizing? Basically, I start looking at the uh, orders that are passing through, and you can see that we have an average over here around two thousand. And if I'm getting stopped, okay, I need a safety. So where can I get out without risking too much and that I will get filled? Let's say that we have enough liquidity to trade even 5,000 shares, okay? And over here, we have only liquidity of 2,000, 1,005. What, I'm gonna have like a two, three, four, five dollar stop in order to get filled? No, that's simply impossible. It's not a good risk reward. So on something like this morning, ASTC, you could size whatever you want. On something like GME right now, you cannot simply size whatever you want. So you're looking at time and sales and judging kind of average fills? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like over here, Bruce, in two seconds, bounce on the support, one buck. So means that let's say you have a decent position over here, short. This can push and you have like a stop maybe two or three bucks. So it's not gonna it's not gonna work for your risk reward. You're gonna lose two months versus your possible profit. Yeah, wonderful stuff. Thank you, Joseph. You're welcome. Okay, 179 seems gonna collapse over here. Why I say that? Because I don't see any kind of big support okay i don't see any kind of big buyers the majority of the buyers are 178 below 178 we go directly 175 okay so that that would really be our big trade okay uh, ba actually unwinded pretty good so unfortunately we missed it um let's see for one second trade i will move okay we'll change over here so the top was 258 exactly over here in that shiny liquidity and this over here 255 beautiful this was a very very good setup let's mark it this was another good setup so we have vwap over here j lines rejection and over here we have this j line rejection the max risk would have been 255 so risking 30 40 cents and it went down like a couple of bucks okay so this is uh, what i like to see That's why you have a trading floor. They captured it, right? Uh, sorry, Bruce. <laughs> That's why you have the trading floor there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Mama Bear and uh, Alexandra. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Joseph. I, I foresee like a, a, a San Marino uh, prop trading room in the future. <laughs> That would be nice, Bruce. That would be nice. Yeah, and I'm not kidding you. If you mention, if if it's for real, I I very well may uh, uh, move. You're always invited over here, my friend. Always invited. <laughs> some pasta, some pizza, some good wine. Ah, un po di caffè, perfetto. Yeah. Yeah. Cappuccino. <laughs> and cappuccino, ah, uh, sicuramente. It's actually snowing very bad over here. Really? Yeah. yeah. Does it ever <laughs> snow there? Yeah, where I live, it snows, but wow. like, you know, maybe uh, 
Yeah, like one one foot uh, wow. high every year, maximum. Wow. So 179, let's see, let's see, let's see. We can have the breakdown. I want to see some big wash over here. Look, BA, how beautiful it's working. The same setup that we see on BA traders, the same setup over here, the same setup. And each time I use bookmap confirmation. Very simple stuff. Do the simple stuff, okay? Oh, shit, sorry. Uh, this over here, okay. So, Jimmy, so why I want to cover in the 20 or the 30s partial? Because there's a big possibility that we don't break at 178. This liquidity is pretty big, uh, 20,000 over here, right? And we can hold it. So, what I do, I prepare uh, partial. And I'm going to look if uh, we will have that 30 and cover into the 30. Let's uh, erase this. Okay. Nicely liquidity 180 now. This is what I wanted to see, Bruce. If it's just not spoofing, I mean that is over there and is a fake uh, fake order, okay. But I believe this is real. And we're gonna have more unwind. So this is what I wanted to see. But how can I trade now short over here, far from J lines or from VWeb? Okay, I exposure myself too much. Uh, for a one one risk reward trade, if I short 179, my risk would be 180 book map, and my first target 178 and 20. So that is the what Bruce before we were saying about the one to one. This will be one, and this will be one. Fairly, how can I trade this? Oh, there's no way, okay? So I'm simply gonna wait. They remove liquidity, so they actually over here ate it. Okay. This, 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 this too. And then a little bit more chance. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just cancel this. Uh, great, great stuff, Joseph. Just so simple and clear. Yeah, that's the best way to to make money and to trade. I'm looking if we can see other patterns, but patterns are gone over here. Well, let's see. We have some pumps, but very low liquidity, very small float. And the one I'm getting is something like that. All right, so now I can decide what I'm going to do over here. Personally, we're going to break this 179 and uh, 180. Uh, I will simply get out market, okay? ES, let's see if we can have a long at the J lines. <clears throat> okay, ES, start to pay attention to this. Why I say that? Look over here. If this was not super perfect this morning, this was incredible. So we had this, 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 J lines dip, J lines dip, and V up over here. And then we have another J lines dip, J lines dip. So this is how to play J lines curl up or J lines dip. Okay, it's basically the, the same thing. Okay, let's put back Jimmy.
uh, Joseph, a question on, on the ES. Um, before you got on, we were covering, um, it was, it's much, much higher time frame uh, stuff, but uh, something we noticed on Monday uh, due to a lot of iceberg transactions uh, shorting, okay. or maybe they're covering. I mean, we don't really know that, but um, <laughs> what, because I know this is a momentum play, you, you know, here with the ES. Um, mm -hmm. What about like any sort of mean reversion uh, trades on, you know, shorting at the top, looking for the the, the pullback to the J lines? Okay, uh, I can tell you that often you will see those resistance uh, that are simply um, hidden, like over here, breaking, and you have to be very careful. So if you are like shorting let's say, into heat map. Just know that the first dip that you will have often will be the 90 May on the one minute chart. If it holds, get out. If it unwinds, you can hold. But it's not the trade style that uh, I've seen in the long run giving a lot of high win rate. If we have a strong trend like this, if we are in consolidation, then yeah, you can try that. But basically, I prefer to, um, I was looking this uh, two days ago on this day over here. So uh, Monday, and Monday was going up. We had resistance, big user heat map, was going down like one buck, boom, one buck, boom. So, or you do micro scalps over here, but what's the purpose of that? My point is to get the big move. So I prefer to long the dips. Right, understood. The uh, it, it was, uh, the, the, I guess, like what, why I'm asking the question was on some of the stocks, uh, we did see bounces off of J lines, um, mm -hmm. but then you would, uh, we, you were looking for a short uh, mm -hmm. back down to those J lines and maybe through them, uh, kind of a bigger. Yeah, it was kind of like a, a gap and crap type of thing. Or, yeah, generally I like to do that mostly on the small caps uh, mm -hmm. because all the gaps tend to fade because we know that they are like, you know, fluff news, cheap companies, um, and they don't have any revenues. They, they live by uh, dilution. So I can do something uh, like on ASTC, I short the, the gap in the morning and then I have the on white. But if I do something like this, for example, an Apple, and I look to short uh, an extension, it's very tough and I can risk big. So I prefer just to stick to, to my plan and look for those, uh, those dips to buy or uh, pops to short, mostly trend following. Right, understood. Facebook is going good today. Facebook is going good. Facebook is giving some very, very big days, like two days ago. Yeah. This day over here, the the fifth, right? Yeah, the fifth. We had a big breakout. You can see that we started the move over here from the 26th. Consolidation curl, push, push. Of, I like Facebook a lot. Moves pretty good. I like the setup that we have on it. This was the day. Then yesterday we had the consolidation. So this is a perfect example. You can see over here, traders, that I always trace the support resistance, okay, or the previous day, uh, or the previous days. And over here we have a, a simply setup called this is a gap and this is a gap and extension or a pop and fill, okay. Basically to call it gap and extension, I would need this day over here to have like one or two percent gap, which we don't have. Uh, we go into that resistance and then we stuff and we unwind okay so this is a stuff pop and fill reason for me to short in this area if you look at this trade over here in the facebook and if you look at this setup over here on uh, astc this is the pre-market high basically nothing changes right the only thing that changes is that astc is in get pop versus uh fit. okay hope it is clear Okay. okay. Yep. Thank you. Jamie, in the meantime, almost got to the Zealands for 
yeah, but no liquidity that I like over here. So let's see. This is a pump. Don't trade something like BNSO. Don't trade it. Simply do not. Uh, let's see also OCGN in the small caps. Today was a pump. So pump from many chat rooms. We can reduce some over here. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put up, I'm gonna put up over here OCGN. OCGN is a stock that I trade a lot in the past. Uh, it trades a lot of volume, so it's not your usual small cap uh, trade. Traded even like yeah, 750, 900 million volume in a day. You can see the dip over here, perfect. The daily Z lines, okay. So this is the stop that I want to to see, and now it's going for the break of this morning. All right, so over here is breakout, and this is J line curl up. So just what we said before, the J lines dip that we see on a intraday pattern, we see it over here. So let's see for the support resistance that we have. This level we have 26 million, not really huge amount of resistance. Okay, this is a good support, good resistance at eight. So let's see, at eight, five minutes. Okay, let's see OCGN. I'm looking at OCGN over here. I want to trade it short. Most likely I will look for, sorry, most likely I will look for uh, a dip to the J lines and long, but for now we have to wait. Let's see how it reacts at, uh, at eight. These are the cases where we can have a stuff, all right? Right. So in this sense, the company is not strong. No, the company, um, I think, is a big market cap. Let me check, Bruce. Correct. We always need to look for the stats. So by memory, is not a small cap. I think it was a 1 billion company. Yeah, 1.4 billion company. So it's not the usual small, ah. uh, small cap. Uh, 181 million flow. Yeah, I remember this institutional ownership low. So it means that big companies, firms, institutional banks are not looking to hold this long term. And we have gaps. Okay, on gaps, which these gaps were 20% uh, at least. We can put even yeah with the 10 million volume trade in the day. We had four faders, five, uh, five faders, four runners. With 50 million, we had four faders, three runners. High of day, 11.15. But this is not a gap. This is an extension at open. So let's do like this. Okay, 50-50. 50-50. Let's see financials. They have 24 cash. Mm, low, no revenues. Mm. But it's a 1 billion company. In this case, if we short 7.98, everybody can see $8 there is a resistance. It's too risky. It's too risky because it's very strong, the volume is still uptrend, or you see a blow up of the volume and stuff, or you cannot short something like this. So don't be in a rush traders, all right? Don't be in a rush. So in, in, this, in this case, um, because, uh, it's a one billion dollar company. It that's the distinction between that and these other crappy companies. Uh, exactly. Therefore, you're not looking for shorting this back down. Exactly, exactly. It's not the usual gap and crap. I mean, this can if you look at the daily. This can uh, run before fading. This can run. This can run. 
this can run. So I would be very cautious over here, trading short. Uh, I'm looking mostly for a dip long, and this will take some, some hours to develop. Then if you are a scalper and you short over here, 7.98, risking 801, that's fine. But you have to cut and break even if this goes back up and you have to look for quick, uh, quick covers. Which personally, I don't like to do it. It's too risky. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, kind of like fundamentally, this is not an A plus setup. Exactly. Understood. Let's see our GME. GME, GME, GME. Instead of BA over here. So we cannot see all the prints over here. Let's filter some. Okay, let's see if they stop it. Only if it stops, I will short it, but no, too risky over here. They're gonna trap shorts. You see these poor people over here, short 98, 99, 98, 99. They got trapped for now. This is not a stuff, it's strong. They're looking for a break of that 810. We have buyers, boom. Just leave it, just leave it, just leave it, just leave it. We can look for a parabolic move, that yes, okay, Bruce? We can look for a parabolic move, that we can do it. So we will look if we have that. Ah, it's it's great, Joseph. I mean, like uh, you are filtering for your A plus setups fundamentally and technically, uh, and for them to meet the criteria. Uh, then this move away doesn't give you the FOMO uh, that um, we all experience. Now, what I'm looking, actually over here, Bruce, we can put even this higher. Okay, so only to spot the bigger orders. We would need to see if they're stacked, so they create the $8 over here, a big support or not. So in case they create a big support consolidation, maybe it could be a scalp long, but for now, it's a little bit too risky. Uh, there was a question on your um, time and sales filtering. If you can maybe show that, show us that again. Yeah, absolutely. So, if I'm using small caps, generally we put uh, minimum 4K shares. Um, being that I want to see only over here the big orders, I moved it. It's not a filter that I use uh, generally. Uh, 8,000 over here. Just want to see the big blocks. Okay, passing. If I'm using big caps, I'm gonna use 9.99. And look over here, Bruce. They're like simply, uh, where is this pen? I really like this because first they rejected. So they collect over here uh, breakout traders and breakout trader, then they stopped out. Over here, they probably collect the short sellers. And then uh, short sellers probably added a day from the rejection and then they're stopping out. So first is a short trap. Um, let me see if I can do something better uh, over here. So 
what they're doing over here. Uh, just let's see over here, traders, so you can understand better. Uh, we can say that this level is where uh, where big hands. So big hands are not me and Bruce. Big hands are really like uh, institutionals, big traders, uh, even can be insiders. Uh, we're big hands, trap, um, breakout traders. Okay. Then over here. We have at this point, actually we'll do like this, otherwise we really don't understand anything. Trying to do something so that you traders understand it. Okay, we can do this. At this point, uh, breakout, long, uh, use stop loss. Fewer the short than wine pull back, and we have door sellers jumping in. Then we have this point and this point. Okay, so we'll do like this, and we'll do like this. So over here is uh more more short sellers jump in uh for the retest rejection of a dollar level think of a double top short sellers stop out and fuel the push new breakout traders all this is the big manipulation that we have from uh, uh we can do like this that we have from uh, big hands okay so something like this for now doesn't give us any edge We're still like uh, midway over here between uh, the high and j line so simply 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 play it okay traders That looks like uh, Leonard has been uh, following some of your strategies here and uh, is doing quite well uh, on the uh, GME. That's fine. Uh, let's see GME over here. Ooh, breakdown. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Joseph. Um, I, I really, really, I mean, uh, I, I, it's such a rarity, like, um, uh, for to find someone like yourself that takes something that trading is so complex, and you've simplified it down to such a understandable level, and you know exactly how to react. Mm -hmm. um, like, how long did this take you, and like, how would you recommend, um, you know, traders? get started uh in that right in the correct direction uh first to learn the chart patterns that i teach so uh, joining personally really the room because you will learn a lot uh, it's not something you will learn the first month it takes time we have traded that with 30 uh, 20 30k like uh, layman bensi um kyle and others are averaging now between 40 and 50k per month we have traded with even bigger accounts or small accounts like Chad, Chad K uh, from New Jersey. I even posted the results these days. He's a bookmap user, uh, Chad Kennedy, that passed from 2K to over 44K in about uh, 14 months. So the point is the first two or three months, you'll learn the strategies, you learn the patterns uh, between trading small size or paper. Then once you're confident, only when you're confident, you can start earn, um, putting a little bit more size and looking for a 
uh, an account building plan. Okay, all this requires time. So it's not something that you'll be in a month. You follow to alerts. Trading is not low. Trading is to manage a correct trading strategy and correct risk management. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. So right now, traders, what I'm doing, I'm looking for or a parabolic, a 50, a 70, in case we have a short. Otherwise, the A plus setup would be dip to the Zealand. That's it. For now, don't trade anything else. Oxygen, ASTC over here, I want to put again. Roku, BA, beautiful online. Uh, yeah, uh, there was a question on, from Edwin on, um, uh, or Erwin on uh, Roku. Mm -hmm. uh, if we, if you could take a, maybe a quick look on that. Sure. Okay. Okay, Bruce, what's the question? Just to go over the, the stock over here. Correct. Uh, <clears throat> sorry again. So dip at the open over here. So wash bottom at 352. Was looking for 350 as main support, whole round dollar number. And then we start reclaiming Zaylands. For now, it's lateral, so I'm not looking for a trade. Wanna see if we can have a mid morning consolidation, midday consolidation, curl and push. Okay, so something like this would be my A plus setup on Roku. I want to see this trend break and then push like this and push like this. So, this will be what I'm looking over here. I need consolidation to the zeros. All right, that's what I'm looking at. Roku pattern J lines curl. Uh, plus, I would say consolidation. And I'm going to put it over here on uh, Discord bookmap as well. So, Roku waiting for consolidation, breakout, curl up. That's what I'm waiting right now. Beautiful, okay. Jim. 175 is coming. Let me take some more profits. One second, Bruce. And still personally in okay let's see if we can have that dip <clears throat> all right all right all right all right yep getting filled getting filled getting filled boom filled okay so the point for me is to look for these setups with very low risk like over here a reason to short cover cover now holding one third okay so this is what we need to do okay so waiting for 175 and lower and that's the point of using a setup to uh, have very good uh, results on the back side. Okay, uh, uh, thank you, Joseph. Uh, Edwin, uh, please uh, go to the Discord uh, chat room uh, and uh, look at the post there for uh, Roku. Uh, Kashif, uh, jo Joseph has been covering uh, exactly how uh, he's gotten such low entries um, or uh, tight entries there. 
with uh, tight um, uh, risk um, with a pretty big reward. Uh, Ralph, uh, you might want to reach out to him um, on the beginner course um, and online videos, etc. cetera. Uh, I, I put all his contact information in the chat there. Okay. Yep, you're welcome. So and, what I'm looking at, sorry, Bruce, if I interrupt. Uh, Len, Leonard is ecstatic about his GME trade. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> so the point is not every single day we'll have the setups. Generally between three and four A plus setups per week, but I get on these over 70% win rate with always at least three R return. So the, solid, the strategy is very solid and traded sincere. For example, if you look over here, traders, this uh, zone over here, this day I'm not doing anything. And I know it before even we start because we are below this resistance, above the support, above the support, above the support. While this day we have this support, all right? So today we are already below that support. We are breaking that level for me as a critical entry. Day two to short over here, the open. And then you can trade all these daily rejections. Surely this is not some trade you can trade with 10, 15K shares. We don't have that liquidity. You can see over here, this is the day where we have, for example, a lot of volume. Look at the difference. Oh, sorry. Look at the difference. All right. Look at the difference. Does that make any sense, Bruce? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Joseph. So I'm looking for those whole round of numbers. I'm looking for the previous support over here, 175. Then we have 170, 165. Surely I want to cover now 175. Then if we have other JLens pop, we can recycle small. Let's see our OCGN. You see, we're consolidating that, that eight. We're having three bookmark levels over here, but I'm not really, really, I'm not really looking for short unless this goes crazy parabolic. Okay, unless those go crazy parabolic. And for me, it's very important, Bruce, over here to look for those dips to cover. You see, always perfect colors. Okay. So on on covering, I mean, you're looking kind of for catastrophic move uh, into high liquidity. Uh, yes, and also I'm looking for washes. So if I'm looking, <clears throat> sorry, if I'm looking for a breakdown, and I see wash. And I start seeing the tape is over here stalling. And then I like to cover on the weakness. Why I have to wait for the bounce? Surely not always I will have perfect covers like on Jimmy right now. But that's the point. If I'm longing, I'm not. And let's say that, for example, let's say we had uh, J Lines dip or VWAP, whatever. I'm not looking that this goes up and then this goes down to cover down here. No. I'm going to take partials. For example, often where I see exhaustion of the buyer. So what means that I don't see any more big greens. So I will sell over here at spikes, at spikes. I'm not waiting that this goes down and I cover on the bid and on the dip over here where instead I want to, to buy. Doesn't make any sense. The majority of the traders are waiting. They're not react, they're reacting late and they're not knowing the price action they, they should trade.
Bruce, there are a few traders in my room that uh, don't have book map uh, asking if this uh, video they could like have access later on, like to, to review GNE. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, it's typically uh, for those that are subscribers. Uh, but, I know. Um, you know, in case you can, just like, uh, because they, they want to like to see Jimmy uh, how to trade it if it's possible otherwise don't worry okay yeah if they can uh, reach out to support at bookmap.com okay thank you one two three in sidebar distribution pattern careful traders when I see this I expect a little bit of wash one two three four five levels over here so uh, just look when i have this all right normally you would expect this but also i'm looking look how many <laughs> levels of resistance i have this is called stair step down pattern so stair step down pattern while uh, the, the stock is still going up we form lower highs and this doesn't mean for me shorting over here in the breakdown. I never like to short in the breakdown. This means only that we can have that fail to 7, 760, 750, 778. All right. So this would be kind of like more like the mean reversion, uh, I guess. Uh, but you, you're not necessarily you're not necessarily taking a, a a position here. No, no, it would be too risky because I've seen it even times where. Let's see where is this pattern over here or this uh, this uh, this one over here? I think is yeah. Okay, I've even seen times that they fake the breakdown. In this case, we're not faking it because we have a lot of sellers over here, over here, over here. They're faking the breakdown and then they push it back up. Hmm. Yeah, Lo love that. You, you refer back to the uh, uh, the tape, the time and sales, and the strength. Yeah, let's see if we can have a long over here, Bruce. So <clears throat> I would like to see 760, a little bit more liquidity. We don't have buyers on the dip for now. I mean, this could be or a cover or a buyer. Okay, I'm still waiting that better dip. Yeah, I'm still waiting 760, 759. So a little bit of patience. It's bouncing. Let's see over here. Seven seventy. Yep, a couple of guys are mentioning here the uh, GME is uh, uh, popping back up. Uh, let us see. 764. Let's see if we have a fake break on the view app and we see any kind of liquidity. For now, we see no buyers, you see. So, oh, this could be a good spot where to get back in. Ideally, we'd like to see this 179.50. See so over here, yeah, this 179, and we have more 
179.50. So this area over here could be a good level of rejection. A little bit more buyers. 10,000 over here. Broke of fading. Okay, a little bit more interested right now in uh, OCGN if we can have a loan. But I don't see any buyers. You see, Bruce, 50K sellers, 27,000, uh, 12,000, 11,000 big sellers. So um, until I see a big support over here, I'm not going to just simply step in. We have only 12,000, 8,000 still sellers. This is a, a a great example of what we you know uh, have been talking about in the webinars for for years about understanding the context of the order flow at your level. So we'll get a feel of seven sixty five, risking that seven sixty. Seven sixty four. So no buyers for now. We took only the dip. So this would be like half position. Still weak over here, reason to get out. So before a possible dump, let's see now if they fake down the, the view up over here and they reclaim it. Only sellers for now. No, no buyers. So simply better to cut it and wait. <clears throat> okay, Bruce. It's uh, almost uh, ninety minutes. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's go right up over here. Okay? Yeah. Let's let's uh, we can wrap it up. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Joseph. Great great session. Okay, so for everybody, if you have questions, reach out to me or to Bruce. We're always happy to help you. Uh, always have your risk per day with the broker set. You stop loss, know your risk reward, things like we covered today about risk management are very important. Wait for the trade to come to you. If it doesn't work, like over here on uh, OCGen, simply cut it. Okay, don't simply marry it, cut it. You see the big sellers over here. This will unwind more. All right. So thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bookmap. Thank you, traders, for being over here with us today and see you next week. Thank you. Very yeah, much. guys. Uh, uh, thank you, Joseph. Just um, uh, uh, guys, I'm going to uh, take the presentation back here from uh, from Joseph. Um, I just there were some questions. There's a few of you guys that were asking about the columns. So uh, let me uh, let me show you that. And uh, thank you, Joseph. Uh, we'll catch up with you on uh, uh, next Wednesday. OK, thank you very much, buddy. OK. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, so uh, there was a, a couple questions uh, on um, the columns, uh, the way that Joseph uh, had them set up. So uh, let me uh, just uh, quickly go through that for you guys. Um, I, I showed you the, the videos uh, where you can find them uh, in the columns, uh, and especially this one, it's under this playlist here, uh, the features and components, and um, just scroll down a little bit, and uh, the um, uh, first one is where I'm sorry, scroll down to here, uh, and um, uh, current order book, right? That one, number 26, right? And you can look through some of the other ones as well. Uh, let me just uh, quickly show you this here. Uh, very simple, very nice sell off here on the on the S and P guys. I know a few guys mentioned that already, um, and um, strong volume on the sell side as well as you guys can see. Um, all right, so the uh, let's just right click in a COB column, okay? 
and we'll we'll go over the configurations here. Uh, in fact, let me I'm going to right click in here and then I'm going to insert another column. So we have two COB columns. Okay, now I'll right click on this one and configure it. So select configure, uh, and uh, you can see what I have just bids and offers. Okay, and that's it. I have it justified to the right, or I mean, sorry, to the left. That's it. Okay, uh, and um, now though, let's uh, show the aggregations here. Now you can play around with these other settings if you like. Um, we're going to show aggregation. Okay, now what this is doing here, when you click this little button right here, or check this little box here, it's showing you um, the accumulation um, from one level, then it adds the, that uh, liquidity to the next level. Okay, and let me zoom in and I'll, I'll just try to try to show you here. Okay, and maybe uh, scroll back a little bit. Okay, so 269 here uh, on the, at 61, okay. And then we have 516 at the at 61 and a quarter. Add these two together, you get 722. Okay, uh, 722 plus the next level, uh, you get your 956. So um, it, it can it continues to add up like this, and that's way the way Joseph has it uh, set up. Okay, that's one of them. Uh, he also uh, showed another one here, uh, and um, I'll just right click again in this column. Uh, and we'll go to configure again, okay? And he set up max depth, okay? And uh, we'll use 10 here on the bid and the offer. You can play around with it uh, to whatever you like. Uh, and then here you can see now uh, that this uh, white line and then the number above it is showing the total aggregation, okay? For these 10 levels on the offer and then these 10 on the bid. That's it, okay? Very, very simple, very straightforward. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, just uh, wanted to cover that for you guys so you have that. Uh, we'll end the webinar here. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. Great session with uh, with Joseph uh, and uh, we're very, very lucky to, to have someone like that. Have a good day everybody and uh, we will catch up with you next time. Okay, bye-bye.